In this video, I'm giving my perspectives from a black American viewpoint from visiting the continents of Asia, Africa, South America, and Europe. And in these continents, I will give some examples of countries that I have visited. Since I'm in Asia, let's kick it off with Asia. And let's start talking about entry requirements for Americans and how easy it is to travel from one country to the next. Of course, different countries have different rules, but so far, the Asian countries I have visited, they did not require me to have a visa. The only thing they required for Americans so far from me in my voyage throughout Asia is a valid passport. That's it. Some countries you might go to require some type of proof of onward travel. That's either to your next destination, whether that be somewhere in Asia or or your home country and that's it just because these countries I have visited do not require a visa entry doesn't mean I can stay as long as I want to these are limited amount of days some are 30 up to 90 days depending on the country visa free and what that means is after that after the expiration of these days I would need to leave the country and go to another nearby country and then I could return back or just on to the next country on to the next travel destination make sure you check the country you choose to visit of the amount of days you can stay because you don't want to overstay and at the end pay a penalty now let's move on to the continent of Africa similar to Asia as the rules for entry are similar and just having a valid passport but it only applied to three countries I visited which were South Africa, Morocco, and Mauritius. Cape Verde and Ethiopia had to get a visa to enter. With Cape Verde, I was able to go to the Cape Verdean Embassy in Washington, D.C., since I live in the area. But I did notice they do have visas upon arrival, and the line was super long, but that is an option. With Ethiopia, same thing. I was able to go there to Ethiopia and once I arrived I was able to get a visa upon arrival but I did notice they do have an online option which I think is the best idea that's the best thing you could do because the lines to get a visa in Ethiopia when I first went was crazy but now they do have an online option and to avoid all that that's what I would suggest you do now let's move on to South America and in this continent you do not need a visa to enter particular the countries I have visited Colombia Guyana and Brazil so let's break down some of these countries in Colombia you do not need a visa It's visa free if you're American but you may need a yellow fever vaccine if you have just came from Brazil so say for example, you're in Brazil and now you want to go to Colombia. If you do that, you will need a yellow fever vaccination in order to get into Colombia. Other than that, if you're coming from America or another country, you do not need that. But if you're coming from certain African countries, you will also need that yellow fever vaccination to enter Colombia. With Guyana, if you're American, you do not need a visa to enter but of course all these countries the visa requirements is only for a particular certain amount of days so if it's 30 days 60 days or 90 days that's how many amount of days you can stay up to after that if you're still in that country you will get penalized so make sure you check the amount of days you can stay visa free now let's move on down to Brazil Brazil is kind of tricky first time visiting Brazil in 2008 I had to get a visa so I went to the Brazilian Embassy in Washington DC and got my visa for my travels the good thing about living in the Washington DC area is that all the embassies are just a drive away it takes me minutes but anyways the entry rule change from the need of a visa to if you're American you do not need a visa and the president well their president that made this choice was this guy right here since he has been out of office Brazil's new president Lula has made the decision to bring back the visa requirement but with a vengeance 
if you take a look at the new visa requirements for Brazil, it's not just for Americans. It's for Canadians and Australians as well, along with crew members of any airline or ships entering Brazil. It applies to them as well. And that's if these ships, which are basically cruise lines coming from the U.S., Canada, Australia, entering Brazil, that would apply to the crew members. The good thing about the new requirement is that it doesn't start until 2025. So you still have time this year if you plan on to visit Brazil, visiting it visa free if you're American, Canadian, or Australian. If not, if you wait until sometime next year around this time, you will have to go through the process. And now you're probably wondering, well, why is this process coming back of having a visa requirement? And why are the requirements much different than before? Because when I first went to Brazil, the process for the visa was very simple, very easy. I did it quickly. The new requirement will have you provide proof of a certain amount of money, basically $2,000 in your bank account, along with your itinerary of where exactly you will be staying. You know, the street, the hotel, or is it an apartment? They will need to know this. And the money is not a big hassle. Now, if you're Canadian, Australian, or American, if you look at the requirements we have for Brazilians as tourists to enter our countries, it's the same exact thing. All the requirements of the proof of money in a bank account, where you'd be staying, and the other requirements is the same exact thing. So what Lula decided to do was just to reverse it. You make us have all these requirements. Well, we're going to make you, well, these particular countries have the same requirements as well. Moving right along to the continent of Europe. Most countries I have, well, not most, all the countries I've visited in Europe. Typically, you do not need a visa. All you need is a valid passport and you're all good. From my experiences, the continent that generally requires neighboring countries to have visas to enter the most is the continent of Africa. While there are some exceptions that I've seen in some African countries, but many African countries have visa requirements for citizens of neighboring countries because concerns of security, immigration control, and economic stability. Let's move to languages in these continents, and let's start off with Asia. Of course, each Asian country has their own language, but the countries I've visited being Singapore, Indonesia, and Thailand, most people I ran into, they spoke English. Maybe not fluent English, but some spoke English. And you might be thinking, well, a lot of people speak English in Indonesia or Thailand. Again, not everyone speaks English, but... There's a good amount of people you're going to run into, especially across in business, some type of business, restaurants, they're selling you things. You'll find it kind of odd that they really speak uh, English. Again, not fluent, but they speak more English than versus South American countries I visited, like Brazil or Colombia. Most people you run into, they're not speaking English. They're speaking their native language, which would be Spanish or Portuguese. Now, I didn't mention Singapore. And the reason I didn't mention Singapore is because mostly everybody in Singapore, they speak English. It's almost like the main language in the country. And I didn't mention Guyana in South America because in Guyana, their first language is English. So they're the only English speaking country in the continent of South America, English being their first main language. And with language in some of the countries I visit in Europe, the only country that you may have a difficulty in would be Portugal because most people I ran into, they spoke Portuguese. But as a whole continent, you will find a lot of English speaking people there. So if English is your main language and your only language, you shouldn't have a big problem when you're visiting the continent of Europe. Language is very diverse in Europe. If English is not their main language, it's their second language, so it should be no problem. And also, in Africa, 
again, it's a very diverse speaking continent. You have people there speaking English, French, Portuguese, native tribal languages. So they speak about at least minimum two languages, three languages. So you should have no problem when you're in Africa. It seems like overall, South America has the least amount of English speaking people compared to Africa, Europe, and Asia. Very strange because our language is so kind of connected being English, Spanish, or Portuguese. We all share the same alphabets, A through Z. The only difference is pronunciation. So I would figure that going to South America, they would have more English speaking people. Now let's talk about safety and crime. Starting off with Asia, safety levels across the Asian countries that I have visited so far are pretty much safe. I'm saying there is no such thing as the perfect country. So each country will have some type of petty theft going on or some type of scam going on. But in the Asian countries I have visited, I have not experienced none of that. So in Asia, it's pretty much safe. And in my opinion, I think the continent of Asia is pretty much the safest continent you could visit. Safety and crime in Africa. Well, the countries I visited in Africa, I would say probably the country that you would have to watch out for safety or having high crime would be South Africa. But at the same time, South Africa is my favorite country in the continent of Africa for many reasons. But the top two is because of the infrastructure and everybody speaks English. Unlike the other countries I visit in Africa, their infrastructure cannot outweigh the infrastructure in South Africa. What I witnessed in the countries I visited in Africa is once you leave the airport, you'll really see how the rest of that city looks. You'll see the road conditions. You'll see all the infrastructure and you just get to see how advanced the country is. And with Morocco, Mauritius, Ethiopia, Cape Verde, I didn't see the infrastructure outweighing the infrastructure that I saw in South Africa, in particular Cape Town. And I know how it is of you visit an African country and you visit the capital, the capital usually being more well developed. The infrastructure is probably better. The road conditions are better compared to the rest of the cities in that country. But when you go to South Africa, it will be not just Cape Town being well developed. It will be the other cities in South Africa as well. That being Durban, Johannesburg, and the rest of the cities in the whole country. So it's a well developed country. And you're probably thinking now, well, what does that have to do with safety and crime? Well, with well-developed countries, sometimes the wealth is unequal and it's no middle class in some of these countries, especially in Africa. So what some do is migrate to other African countries. So with South Africa being well-developed, having good infrastructure, it's a lot of money in South Africa. So you have neighboring countries that's not doing so well as South Africa. They want to come and migrate to South Africa. Whether it be neighboring countries or far away African countries, whether it's being in Western Africa or even Central Africa, they all want to come to South Africa. For what? Because it's better infrastructure. It's a better life. So they're migrating to something that's better. So not only will you have crime from South Africans within their own country, but now you have extra crime coming from migrants who may not can find legal work, so have to do illegal things. So you have combined crime in South Africa, which to me, in my opinion, makes the crime high. Moving along to Europe, Europe is generally considered safe for travelers. And maybe you're thinking, well, Europe is well developed. Why isn't it high crime there? Well, yes, Europe is well developed, the whole continent. And Africa is not. That's the big difference. Africa is not more well-developed than Europe. South America is not more well-developed than Europe. Europe has better offerings for their people being social welfare programs compared to the continent of Africa and the continent of South America. That's the big difference. So that's why it's not as high crime there as it is in Africa or South America. And when it comes to employment, 
which continent has better employment for their people? Is it Africa, South America, or Europe? Oh, I didn't forget. I can't leave out South America. Safety levels in South America, of course, you know, it's going to vary by country to country. And the countries I have visited, being Guyana, Colombia, and Brazil, I would say the country that is the least safest would be Brazil. Brazil has high crime. Brazil is a much bigger country than Colombia or Guyana. Probably you can, you can put those two countries together, Guyana and Colombia, and it's still not going to match the size of Brazil. Brazil, in my opinion, has high crime because it's not really a lot of employment opportunities for Brazilians, especially for the black Brazilians. So when you have a country that size with little to no jobs, people are going to make a way to survive. And with that comes what? Crime. So it's very high crime in Brazil. The countries I mentioned that I have visited throughout the world, none of them can compare to the crime that's in Brazil. I always tell my friends when I visit South Africa, when they bring up the topic of, have you heard what's happening in South Africa? Do you know about this crime? And I'm always up to date on the country that I visit of what's going on. So most of the time I already know what they're talking about, but I always tell them, the crime that you have here in South Africa is not comparable to Brazil. First of all, the country of South Africa is very small compared to Brazil. Therefore, Brazil has more crime. It has higher crime. It's a bigger country. South Africa, there's one time zone for the whole country. Brazil, there's different time zones because it's that gigantic. So the crime is widespread. Also, by South America being connected to North America via Central America, just the type of guns they have in Brazil is way different than what they have in South Africa or anywhere in Africa. And also with the drugs, it's more abundant due to the location, being that it's in South America and North America is not that far away. So the type of crimes, the drugs, guns, much worse in Brazil. Now let's talk about transportation. Transportation in these continents. Asia, transportation is not that hard. Whether you want to take a train, bus, taxi, tuk-tuk, depending on the country. Many Asian countries have efficient public transportation systems, subways, buses. So for myself, it's not hard to get around. In Africa, when it comes down to the transportation, most of the transportation I took was by taxi or if they have some type of ride sharing app that being uber i'll take that other than that i have not taken any type of public transportation and i highly doubt that i will now i have taken public transportation in singapore and also the first couple of times i went to thailand and i found that it was very easy and now you're probably wondering, well, you took public transportation in Asia, but why not in Africa or South America? Well, I have public transportation in South America and Brazil. And that was my first couple of times visiting the country. And I don't think looking back, it was a good idea. I don't think so. Not at all. Uber, taxis, any type of ride sharing app is the way to go. It's the safest and it's the quickest. The thing about taxis in Brazil in particular, or in Africa, in the countries that I visited, is I learned that they can take you the extended route. So if you're trying to get from point A to point B, they might cut corners and make the trip a little bit longer than what the trip really is, just to get a little bit of extra money from you. And to avoid all that, why go through that when you have ride sharing apps and you can see everything and they're trying to take you there quickly as they can to get to the next customer versus trying to take you the extended route to get extra money out of you and that's very popular in some african countries and of course in some south american countries so now you might have the question of well that doesn't happen in asia i'm not saying that it doesn't happen in asia that too could happen in asia of getting into a taxi especially a taxi that does not have a meter because you're not going to know how much the total cost is going to be unless you ask them first. And that is without getting in first. You ask them first, they give you a price, and you settle with it. And then you get in and go on to your destination. Versus you just getting in, hoping they're going to take you there the quickest as they can. Which, most likely, they will not. 
Now, with public transportation in Asia versus Africa and South America, it's totally different because in Africa and South America, in the countries that I visited, stealing of the cell phone is very popular. Unlike here in Asia, it's very popular in Brazil. It's very popular in Ethiopia and also in South Africa. So those are some things that you don't have to worry about when you're in the continent of Asia of somebody's going to come up to you, snatch your cell phone and run away from you. When I'm in Brazil, I'm tense. Colombia, South Africa, Ethiopia, certain countries you go to, you're a little bit more tense when it comes to that cell phone and public transportation than other countries or other continents. When it comes to transportation, when I'm in Europe, Transportation seemed to be an ease. Also, I felt very safe along with that. When I was in Germany, I've been to Germany many times to different cities throughout the country. I felt safe taking the bus transportation. Also, in London, I visited once. And the bus transportation there was easy. And I didn't fear having my phone out that it was going to be taken from someone. And let's move along to shopping. Some people, when they travel... They like to shop. Myself, the only thing that I'm shopping for is food and maybe some type of magnets that I collect as I travel just to have a souvenir to put on my refrigerator. That's about it. Other than that, I'm not really shopping for clothes or sneakers or anything like that because most of the time I'm bringing lots of clothes. So to buy things from another country just to add on to what I already have will be too much for me to bring back so i stick to what i have and that's it now when it comes to the different shopping malls that i visited throughout these continents i would say that in the continent of asia they have some very unique shopping malls just from the design of the malls up to what's inside these shopping malls you'll be surprised that especially when i went to thailand they have some non-authentic popular brands like Gucci, Chanel, anything you can think of that's actually inside the mall being sold. Now, if this was Europe, this would be considered illegal. But in different continents, I guess it's not. Especially in Thailand, you can. Also, I saw some knockoffs in Indonesia as well. So if you're into buying things that's not original, then Asia is for you. But if you're in Singapore, you're going to the shopping malls, you will not see knockoffs. In Singapore, there's actually the real authentic Gucci, Chanel, and other high-end brands. But they're the original with the original prices. In South America, when it comes to shopping, the shopping experience is okay. It's not bad, but it's not like the shopping experience in Asia. And again, like I said, Asia... Even the design of the shopping malls and shopping centers is much more advanced and better than South America and Africa. When I visited Portugal, London, and Germany, the shopping experience isn't bad there as well, but it's nothing compared to the shopping experience in Asia. And again, it's just the design of the shopping malls in Asia. It just seems more advanced with a better shopping experience. Now let's go to the continent of Africa. In Africa, again... Asia, hands down, it beats the continent, in my opinion. But in South Africa, in particular in Cape Town, the shopping experience isn't bad. It's a well-developed country, and the malls there were well-developed. But again, it cannot beat the designs of some of the shopping malls I've seen in Thailand and even here in Singapore. And when we're talking about shopping and the whole shopping experience, we have to include also any problems you might have with the language or even your safety, the cost of different items like foods, clothing, or whatever, I think Asia wins hands down. Now we're gonna get into beaches. Asia is home to some of the most stunning beaches, but there's other countries, in my opinion, in different continents that have better beaches than the beaches I've seen in Thailand, Indonesia, and also here in Singapore. And in my personal opinion, that continent is South America in particular. There's one country, which is Brazil, which is just a coastline of nothing but beaches from the north all the way down to southern Brazil. There's lots of different types of beaches. 
And what I mean by that is once you visit Brazil, you start going to different states, you'll see that different cities have different types of beaches. Some beaches, you'll see that the water is a turquoise type of color, while some beaches might have crystal blue water, while other beaches might have a brownish color water. And this is all due to what's underneath, the vegetation that's in the water, that's in the ocean, that turn the waters different colors. Also, you'll find that some beaches have sand dunes. You'll find that some beaches are more remote. Remote being that it's just a beach only. There's no stores across the street. There's no restaurants nearby. It's just one big beach. And you find all of this in one country, and that's Brazil. So I think with this category, when it comes to beaches, hands down, South America win. With Brazil being the one country that just overshadows the rest. Now, this could change depending on where I go to next and just throughout my world travels. In the future, I might find another country in Asia or some country in Europe or even in Africa, but I highly doubt that it can match up to the beaches that are in Brazil. Now, in Europe, I did go to a beach in Lisbon, Portugal, but it's nothing compared to the beaches that's in Brazil. Also, in the continent of Africa, I've been to many beaches. I've been to beaches in Morocco, beaches in Cape Verde, beaches in Mauritius. And also beaches in my favorite country in Africa, which is South Africa in Cape Town. But I'm trying to think and see, is there a beach that's comparable to any place in Brazil? And it isn't. Now, in Cape Town, the beautiful thing about that city is it kind of reminds me of Rio de Janeiro. Being that there's mountains there, there's beaches. But overall, the beach there is no beach there that can compare to the beaches that's in Brazil. I'm going to end the video right here. So in conclusion, if you're a traveler and you have visited different continents and different countries, what are some countries that I didn't name that you have visited that you have your opinions on of anything I have said in this video?